Hi, my name is Ron Parsons. I am a midwifery educator and today I'm going to explain how to perform an abdominal examination during pregnancy. This is an essential skill for midwives, student midwives, doctors alike. It tells us information about the growth of the fetus, the position of the fetus um, and some indicators of fetal well-being also. I'm going to run through how to perform the examination, the key things to look out for, what equipment you need um, and the structure that you should be following. So, like with any clinical skill, we're going to follow inspection, palpation and auscultation as our systematic structure for performing this examination. It's important that we follow the structure so that we don't get lost or miss any of our key steps. Before I start the examination, I am going to look at the notes. They will, they will give me important information about the pregnancy, about the woman's health and history so far. If we are later on in the pregnancy and someone else has done a palpation, I can also review the findings of that, which will you know, inform any palpation that I do. I'm going to seek consent, which means talking to the woman about why we're doing the examination, what are the risks, what are the benefits of it, and ensuring that she's happy for us to go ahead. We then need to make sure that we wash our hands. We don't need gloves for this procedure, uh, but we should ensure that we are maintaining good hand hygiene, both before and after the palpation. And before the palpation, I'm gonna ask the woman if she has recently passed urine, and if she hasn't, ask her to go to the bathroom. And the reasons for that are twofold. So firstly, a full bladder on palpation might be quite uncomfortable. You can imagine someone pressing onto your bladder, it isn't gonna be very comfy. And secondly, it might impact some of the measurements that I take. I'm then going to ask her to lay either on an examination couch or if we're at home, she could lay on her couch with a pillow behind her. Pregnant women are really prone to supine hypertension, so it's important she doesn't lay flat on her back. Instead, the head of the bed needs to be at an angle, and that's to prevent that supine hypertension as a result of the weight of the fetus, the uterus, its contents, pressing down on her superior vena cava. As I said, I've washed my hands and I'm going to ask the woman to expose her abdomen for me and we need to make sure we're paying attention to her privacy and her dignity, so making sure she's not exposed for longer or more exposed than she needs to be. If we think about our three steps to clinical examination, we're going to start off with inspection. So I'm starting off with a visual inspection of the abdomen. I can see the shape, so is it round, which indicates a baby who's lying longitudinally? Is it oval, you know, oval, oval shape? So it could indicate a baby lying kind of transverse. Can I see any strigav gravidarum, which you would maybe know as stretch marks? If they're silvery, it indicates they're old. If they're red and fresh, it indicates that they are new occurrence. I might see a linea negra, which is a melanized strip uh, from the umbilicus to the symphys pubis. It's an indicator of pregnancy. It's caused by hormonal changes. Perhaps I can see a scar, either from an operation, such as a cesarean section, or perhaps a laparotomy if the woman has had her appendix removed. I would look for any bruising, could indicate signs of domestic abuse. I can also look and inspect, is this abdomen the same size that I'm kind of expecting? So is there an indication that this is actually, it's looking a lot bigger than I was expecting? Maybe that's due to polyhydramnios, or is it looking a lot smaller? is that due to oligohydramnia, so that's either too much or not enough amniotic fluid around the baby. Okay. I may want to ask the woman at this point about fetal movements depending on her gestation and make a note if they are regular or if she's got any concerns with those escalating that. So I've moved, I've done my inspection of the abdomen. Okay. I'm also, you know, I could be looking out for any rashes, any rashes from pregnancy. And I'm going to move on to my palpation. So we've got three palpations that we do on the pregnant abdomen. So the first is a fundal palpation. This takes place at the fundus, okay? That fundus is the top of the uterus. The second is the lateral palpation. So that's palpating kind of generally both sides of the abdomen. And then finally, we've got pelvic palpation. So I'll go through those step by step. So I'm going to use my two hands. As a student, you're going to press much more softly than a qualified midwife is or qualified professional. Um, so don't be afraid to have a gentle but firm feel. One thing I was always taught is you must keep your nails short as a healthcare professional, but also when you're palpating, you can lift the tips of your fingers up slightly. You don't want to be digging in, okay? You want to be kind of almost pressing with the pads of your fingers, but not digging your nails in. So I'm gonna take my two hands and I'm gonna perform my fundal palpation. And I'm feeling for the top of the fundus and you feel where it's firm. And I'm just moving my hands side to side uh, what I'm feeling for is a fetal part. So if I can feel something that's hard and round like a cricket ball, it could be a head. So that would indicate perhaps the baby's in a breech position. If I can feel something soft, 
and kind of lumpy, it's probably the fetal buttocks suggesting that perhaps the baby's in a cephalic position. And the mum will be able to give you really important information here. So does she feel like there's something hard pressing on her ribs? It might be quite sore. Or where does she feel her kicks? That's gonna give you lots of important information. Once I'm happy that I've located, you know, a fetal part, I'm happy, I'm confident, I'm gonna move on to my lateral palpation. And there's two ways that I can do this. I could either do what we call a walking hands palpation, which is where I feel both sides and I'm walking my hands across and I'm feeling what I can, what fetal parts I can feel. So here I can feel something firm and that suggests to me that therefore it's the fetal back because when I'm palpating it, it's not moving very much and it appears kind of nice and firm and long. On the other side, I can indent the uterus a lot more and that to me suggests there's fetal parts. So that's gonna give me information about the lie and the position of the baby and there are lots of videos about lion presentation that I would and position that I would encourage you to watch so here I can tell right the baby's in a longitudinal lie and I know that position wise it's going to be on the left the maternal left hand side I'm then going to move on to my pelvic palpation now it's important here that you use two hands this is the current up-to-date practice you may in practice see people using their thumb and forefinger and this is what's called poor licks grip it's outdated, it's uncomfortable for the women, and we shouldn't be using it. So to perform the pelvic palpation, I'm going to take both of my hands, place them here on the uh, in the pelvic region. I'm feeling kind of just above the top of the symphysis pubis. Okay, so remember that you might know that as your pubic bone. And again, I'm feeling, can I feel something round and hard? And it's almost what we call balotable, which means you can almost kind of tap it between your fingers and feel it move. That would indicate a head. If it's something that's kind of lumpy and a bit more kind of indeterminate, could that be a breech presentation? So is that the buttocks presenting as the presenting part? Okay. I'm gonna also palpate now for engagement. So that's the descent of the fetus into the pelvic inlet. And that is measured in fifths. So it could be that I can feel just a little bit of the fetal head and I would say well we're four fifths engaged because four fifths of the head's in the pelvis. If I can feel all of the fetal head it's not in the pelvis at all I would describe it as free and anything in between we go for four fifths, three fifths, two fifths depending on what we can feel. I'm then going to take a measurement so depending on local guidelines you'll measure the abdomen at different points it could be from 25 or 28 weeks depending on your seeing women. So although this is called the symphysis fundal height, we actually start at the fundus. So I'm going to feel the fundus. I'm going to take my tape measure. We always place it with the numbers down to prevent measurement, bi measurement bias. And I'm going to place the zero at the fundus. Okay. And then I'm going to measure down to the top of the symphysis pubis. That's not the pubic hairline, so I need to palpate. And I should be gentle because it's going to be a little bit sore, particularly in later pregnancy due to the hormonal effect on the joints. I feel, I measure. Okay, so we're here, we're at 36 centimetres. Now we would expect that centimetres matches gestation. So if this woman is 36, centimetre, uh, 36 weeks, we expect her to have a fundal height measurement of 36 centimetres. Um, if it's significantly below this or significantly above this, then we may need to refer for growth scans. That will depend on your local policy, um, depending on if you're using customised growth charts or not. Uh, there are some kind of old rules out there about when you should refer people for scans. I'm not going to go into that now because I don't want to mislead you. But before we had customised growth charts, it would go by what the number was. Finally, I'm going to do my auscultation. So here I've got a pinard. Okay, so this is a pinard stethoscope and it's what we can use to listen to the fetal heart rate. This is the gold standard for auscultation and it is what we should be using to confirm the fetal heart before we use any type of fetal heart rate monitor, including a Doppler pinard or a CTG machine. So I need to place the pinard on, what I'm aiming for is the fetal shoulder, behind the fetal shoulder, because that's where I will get the clearest heart sound. So that's why it's important that I'm able to palpate where the back is. Now, um, for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to Imagine that the back is along this side. Okay. I'm going to take the wide end of the pinard and I'm going to place it over the back where I can most likely hear the fetal heart rate. I then need to put my ear to the pinard. I need to do this when I'm not touching the pinard to prevent any um, sounds. And my advice is to always face away from the woman because you don't want her to be alarmed by your face if you're not initially able to hear it or if you're concentrating and counting. 
So you would put your ear to the pinard and then you'll count for a full minute and you're counting the fetal heart rate. At the same time, you should be taking a maternal pulse to check that you're not listening to the maternal heart rate. Once you've done that, you could then use your uh, Doppler, your ultrasound Doppler, um, so that the woman is able to hear the heartbeat as well. Once we have completed the examination, we can help the woman get dressed. We can help her up. We need to explain the findings to her. If there are any concerns, then we need to make a referral and we need to document it in the notes and make sure that we've arranged follow-up. And that concludes how to do a basic abdominal palpation.